sharing with you today one of my favorite homeschooling tech items. Now we have been using virtual reality in our homeschool for the past two years and it's been going really well and I do have some boundaries around it and I have some rules that we follow um, just to ensure that is it is as safe as possible and I'll share those with you today as well but overall uh, virtual reality has been an absolute winner in our homeschool and with the way that we approach it it has been um, really complementing uh, homeschooling in general and learning and learning in that kind of environment it really has brought learning to life for us in our homeschool and that's why i thought i would create a video sharing with the tips and tricks around using virtual reality in your homeschool the games that we incorporate and how we incorporate them here welcome my name is tiffany and this is into life homeschool my channel is all about motherhood homeschooling and organization so if those things sound like things that you're interested in i would love for you to subscribe this is like my disclaimer to let you know that you know it is something that is recommended for older children i i don't think i would feel okay with uh letting a younger child uh use the vr i don't think it's really appropriate for um children under under six um and i was very cautious about introducing it to my daughter but because she is quite uh, mature for her age uh I, I felt that you know she's eight and she's able to to use it quite well now but she has very limited exposure to it meaning it's about 15 minutes or less that she has in game time my son who is 11 um he can play it for a little bit longer than my daughter so she can watch and she can engage in that way as well um, so there's lots of different approaches that we have had. Um, it's been a lot of trial and error as well. And I think it's just about what feels right for your particular children and kind of how you feel about those kinds of things in tech in general. It's just a, a matter of finding your balance. And if it's something that you want to incorporate into your homeschool, because it's something that kind of brings learning to life, that is exactly why I wanted it. I wanted to kind of give it another, give homeschooling layers. I like homeschooling with layers. I know that sounds really weird, but that's kind of the only way I can ex explain it. I like to bring as many different, uh, you know, things, experiences into our homeschool. So whether it's an actual physical experience or with virtual reality to things that we can't actually go and visit. So I love using it for geography. I love using it for history. I love using it for art. I love using it for mindfulness and uh, meditation and all of those kinds of things as well. I love using it for fitness too. Um, for my children in particular, they love uh, music and finding the beat and and it's very, very confidence building. Um, it's It's been an unexpected, very big highlight in our homeschool. So that's why I created this video today. I'm going to run you through a couple of the games that I love the most personally as a home educator. And I'm going to talk you through a couple of the things that we've incorporated um, as we have gotten used to using VR in our homeschool. The first game that I want to uh, introduce you to is called Wanda, W-A-N-D-E-R. I used to think it was called Wanda, as in W-O-N-D-E-R. So I, I'm spelling it now because I have been saying it wrong for quite some time. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of how I roll. Uh, it is, I think it's applicable to both. I think it describes it wonderfully. Uh, so Wanda is something that is used weekly in our homeschool or even sometimes daily uh, it is definitely something that we love to use when we're reading a book or learning about an art or learning about a, a significant place uh, we get the VR out and we have a squeeze and find out where it is and in the world on the map and we find it, we search it, we locate it and we enjoy it. We did that with Echo Mountain in our book. We wanted to find out where Maine was. We've done it with Leonardo da Vinci, our study in art, and we wanted to uh, see where he came from and we, we looked up his hometown and, and it was just something that just you know, allowed for that interest led. You know, those questions that the kids kind of ask and you kind of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> those are the kinds of times that I love to turn to VR and 
let's see if we can find it. Let's see if we can see it. Let's see if we can be immersed in it. And it really does bring learning to life. And we learn together because I don't know these things and we're searching for answers together. And that's what I love about homeschooling. I don't have to know everything. You know, there are so many resources out there that I can lurch, learn and search with my kids and we can together learn um, all of these things that we, you know, didn't know before. So that is a, one of the most wonderful games. I highly recommend it. It is something that I always recommend when people ask about VR because it's one of my favorite things. So um, I really want to travel the world with my kids and show them everything. And that's not easy to do right now. Um, I mean, it's not easy. It wasn't easy to do before COVID, but it's definitely not easy to do now. Um, so this is something that I, I feel like it's it's filling something in my heart that, you know, at least I can show them in a way that feels real and that they can comprehend just how different homes can be, just how different buildings can be in general, cities, how big and amazing, you know, sky, sky rises can be, um, all of those kinds of things that here in Australia we might not have as much of. Next game that I wanted to mention is called Beat Saber. So Beat Saber is probably one of the most popular games in virtual reality. And a lot of people probably dismiss it thinking that it's not actually, it doesn't have an educational component. I truly believe that most games do have an educational component. It's just how you look at it and um, whether it has appropriate settings for, for kids. And that's my, probably my biggest challenge is finding that, making finding an appropriate game that is um, also educational. So Meat Saber is something that I would happily recommend uh, because it is fun. Uh, it is all about beat. So it's definitely something that all children should be exposed to. That is, you know, one of the foundations of learning in music. So Beat Saber is a winner. And not only that, it gets you moving. <laughs> it is challenging um, and it is wonderful. So my husband absolutely is obsessed. He is sold with Beat Saber. He uses it. He has lost a bit of weight using Beat Saber in the mornings and, and using it as his workout. It's a great uh, game for physical fitness. And um, it's also a really great game to learn how to move with the beat because if you don't, you lose the game. <laughs> so uh, it's definitely a really fun one. I love to use it for my children that have ADHD. So it really gets them moving. It gets them uh, kind of, you know, focusing on the movement and the music and it allows them to kind of go into school afterwards, go into that school work mode, sitting down at the table, they're much calmer, they're much, uh, they've gotten all the wiggles out. And um, not that I insist on them sitting still, but it allows them to. And they like to be able to do that, especially when we're doing things like art with drawing and, uh, you know, those kinds of subjects that they actually really need to sit still. Sometimes they can't. And that can be really hard, especially for my son with Tourette syndrome. Um, you know, the nervous system needs that sense of movement to calm it down. And this sort of game actually really helps that because they can come out of it uh, and be calm and not revved up because some games can do that too so it's it's definitely a balancing act and i think it's definitely a personal preference too so what works for my children may not work for yours but it's definitely a winner for mine um so i think it's worth mentioning that for adhd i feel like games like this um, in virtual reality can be really helpful the next game i want to talk to you about is titans of space now this is a game that is relatively new to us um i don't know how long it's been on them you know, in the game world, uh, but it's definitely new to us. So I have a limited experience with it, but I did want to share it because I think it is really cool. Um, we love space. We have done unit studies on space over and over and over because that is just something that we love. We love science. So we do lots of it. Uh, so the, the opportunity to have space in virtual reality, we just jumped at. We thought, that's a no-brainer, let's get this game. And we tried it out and we thought it was amazing and had to recommend it because it is something that really helps with kids' comprehension to actually understand where we are in the universe. But not only that, how, how vast it is to be able to be immersed in it and see it and like just really be able to comprehend space. I don't, I don't think I can verbally explain this <laughs> in a way that really justifies it. So 
Uh, it is something that I highly recommend because I think that for kids that love that visual aspect of learning and sort of kinesthetic approach to learning as well, the hands-on sort of learning, the VR does definitely address those things. Um, but also auditory, it, it really helps to have the music and the it's just a whole experience. Um, it's, there's nothing quite like it. So I definitely recommend uh, this game if you are a space-loving, science-loving family. I highly recommend it. I don't think you need to spend a, a great deal of time in that uh, game to really get a lot out of it. I will be listing all of these games in the description box below. Color Space is one that i am in love with it is beautiful and it, that's that's the perfect word for it it is beautiful you go into it and it is just like a meditative experience to be able to just get everything out of your head and focus in on the colors and you're filling the color palettes and uh my kids really love it they think that it is just a completely unique experience for them i personally find it as a mindfulness approach so if we're feeling a little overwhelmed one day i will encourage using that kind of game we have other things as well that we incorporate of course but uh virtual reality we're talking about virtual re reality today and when i use that i definitely address it in a way that um will help with calming uh so if we've got situations where someone's feeling really upset about something we've been a little upset lately we've lost our beautiful dog of 14 years our baby girl uh sorry so we've been really really upset um and we have moments where we're feeling just like we can't focus and we're a little bit in our grief and things like this really help this vr game really helps with that it helps just calm things down but it it just kind of gets things out of your head a little bit so I definitely find that this game is something that I enjoy personally because I am artistic. So if you have uh, people in your family that are really artistic, really love that kind of mindfulness approach, like calming sounds. So when you select the particular um, the particular color, it makes a sound and it and when you feel something, it actually kind of makes that area of that that area that you're filling with color um it makes it move and it comes to life in a way uh so i really love that and i think it is just a absolutely beautiful game it really does give a sense of peace and we all find the way you are immersed in this game does truly have a meditative effect and your mind is left feeling like it has had a mini holiday um i thought i would kind of there are a couple of other you know virtual reality systems out there that are as equally um, effective and affordable as the Oculus. Uh, we have the Oculus Quest 2. Um, fantastic, love it. Uh, I think there are newer models out there as well, um, but I think that I would like to share some of the things that I love about it and some of the things that I don't love about it. So maybe it can help you you know, with your searches if you're looking for um, a VR set. Things I love about the Oculus is that it is user-friendly. So you don't have to know much about console games. It's relatively easy to set up and it's small enough to fit into a drawer. So I like that because I like to keep it out of the way. Um, I love that the uh, it's wireless. So for my son who has Tourette's syndrome, things with cords don't work for us. They um, become dangerous and limiting. So I definitely love that it is wireless. And for that reason, the battery life is only two hours. So this works perfectly for us because we don't use it for long periods of time. Um, so, you know, the most that we would be in virtual reality would be 30 minutes. So that works just fine for us. It goes back on the charger and, um, you know, it's, it's never really run out unless we have visitors over. So when we have visitors over, um, you know, that can be a bit of a challenge, but then, you know, it's good to push them, you know, not push them, but move them onto other areas to play. So I don't, I don't quite, you know, dislike that time limit. I think that that's always a healthy thing to just be going, okay, now I need to wait for it to charge and move on. And it's no, no arguments there. Not that my kids do that. They may do it in the future. I'm very aware that some kids do. And um, I think that that's a great way to have, you know, some limitations around how much it is used. I love the safety barrier that you can set up uh, prior to using it as well. It allows them to enjoy the experience without worry of running into anything. 
my biggest worry when we got virtual reality was I was like imagining, you know, we'd run through the glass door or, you know, someone would hit the bench and break their hand or, you know, all of these horrible things that you've seen on TV or in memes. And none of that has happened. Um, I think that... I think you'd have to be pretty irresponsible with the way you use it for it to cause injury. That said, I do think that it is very, very important that you're careful with how you're standing. Uh, we have some rules around that with our kids as well. They're either standing or sitting. There's no kind of in between. They're not like getting down on their knees or, you know, moving around in that way because it is very unsettling, especially for kids with their, you know, their balance is not completely, that's not completely developed. And there is some controversy around virtual reality and kids uh, because of that. So, go ahead and, and research that. I might even try and find a good link that you can research and make your own sort of decisions around that. Um, I've looked into it and I feel that uh, I've spoken with my OT and all of those kinds of things as well. We've made our decision. We're happy with our decision. We don't need any you know, judgment in that area. Uh, this video is literally just about how you can all incorporate virtual reality experience in homeschooling, but I like to try and give as much information as I can in terms of what I know. Uh, I like to be open and honest. So there is some controversy around whether kids should use VR and I'm totally okay with that. I'm, I'm aware. Um, and I will give you as much information as I can as well so that you can go and do your best. The safety barrier is something that I really, really like. Uh, and my husband sets that up because he's good at it. <laughs> and I, I mean, you don't have to be like my kids set it up as well. Let's just say that. So the things that getting to the things that I dislike about virtual reality or this particular virtual reality, um, the Oculus. Uh, I hated the foam on the inside of the VR. It made the kids hot and sweaty. Um, but we have actually since replaced those. Um, and we used, uh, I think Oculus, it, um, my husband dealt with that. So I think he actually contacted Oculus and they've released a new silicon seal. So you may actually be getting that if you got an Oculus, uh, a newer model Oculus, you may actually be getting that silicon seal. It's something definitely worth looking into. Um, it is much easier to clean it and much more hygienic. So I definitely recommend that. Uh, the elastic bands are white and they're hard to keep clean. So if there is a way that you can choose a different color, I highly recommend it. White is not the greatest idea for kids. <laughs> um, my hubby, oh, my hubby wears glasses. So that has been a big challenge because, um, well, it just kind of gets very hot up there and <laughs> it makes them, his glasses steam up and it's just it's just a big pain uh so for people that wear glasses it's not as enjoyable uh but uh you know i guess you can wear contacts if you feel comfortable but that's not our thing uh so my husband found a wonderful place that can help with creating uh vr specific prescription lenses that magnetize into the lenses it's brilliant and it really does allow him to enjoy the vr like the rest of us so I'll link that specific shop um, in the description box below because they were fantastic to deal with. Uh, I believe that they were an American company, but they were so fast with the postage and so fast with the manufacturing of it all, even during, like this was at Christmas time. So I was astounded that they were able to, to do that. They had a few issues with the first, um, first ones. Uh, they actually broke after a couple of uses um, because obviously we're taking them on and off, on and off all the time and they kind of, yeah, didn't handle it well. Uh, but the replacement, they replaced it really, really quickly um, and it was not a problem at all. Uh, we haven't had a problem and we've been, I think we've had them for about a year since. So definitely worth investigating. It was not overly expensive uh, in terms of being able to enjoy these things equally um, like the rest of us, I think that that is definitely something that you should look into if you have someone in your family that has glasses. So this is my, you know, approach to homeschooling and virtual reality, and we love it. I think it's amazing. I think it's a wonderful asset to a homeschool. I think it definitely is allowing my kids to learn in a completely unique, hands-on way, um, and I think it's just a great thing to incorporate if you can, if you're in a position to do so. Uh, so if this is something that you're interested in, I will leave all the, all the, you know, 
links for everything that we use, all the fa all our favorite games in the description box below. So you can just go down and, and have a look and see and make the decisions for yourself. But from a perspective of a home educator, it can definitely be educational. There are also documentaries. We haven't got there yet because I'm waiting for the kids to get a little bit older. But I wanted to share the kind of games that we're using pretty much, you know, every couple of days, we're definitely using these kinds of games in our home uh, and they bring us a lot of joy. So we wanted to share them with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions around virtual reality, if I can't answer, I will ask my husband too. Uh, we are more than happy to help. I know it can be a little bit intimidating, but they really have made these systems, these sets uh, way more family friendly. And I love that. I think it's a great way to, to just add another layer to homeschooling. It all just, you know, makes things more enjoyable for everybody. Thank you for watching. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my, my channel. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.